Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org, and this is the first of two videos comparing large aperture 50mm lenses. Here I'm comparing the Canon 50mm f1.2 L and the much smaller and older designed Canon 50mm f1.4. The 1.4 weighs half as much as the 1.2, but they're both sturdy lenses, although the 1.4 is prone to autofocus system damage if you don't use a hard lens hood. The 1.2 lets in an extra third of a stop of light, but that third of a stop isn't the only difference. There's also a $1,200 price difference. Let's see if that difference is justified. To begin with, for those of you who like to be discreet or who shoot video, this is what the lenses sound like. For comparison, here's the old Canon f1.8 lens that everyone's familiar with. It's pretty noisy. Now here's the 50mm f1.4. And again, not too bad. Still a little bit loud, but not so whiny. Now here is the 1.2. Nice and quiet. Here it is again. You can hardly hear it. This is actually a good example of three types of Canon focusing motors. The old micro motor in the 1.8, the micro USM motor in the 1.4, and the ring type USM motor in the 1.2. But let's move on to the important stuff, image quality. We've been having an unusually warm winter, and when these lenses arrived in the mail, the weather had been beautiful all week long. So of course, when I went out to shoot with them, it was gray and overcast. But I shot anyway, with my standard testing procedure. I shot with my 5D Mark III on a sturdy tripod, using live view to focus and a remote release. I shot raw and processed the images as 16-bit, with no sharpening or lens corrections. You can look at the raw files yourself here. I found a spot along the Stiligwamish River that would give me plenty of fine detail to look at across the frame, and the results were a little surprising. Here in the center, with both lenses wide open, the 1.2 is much sharper with better resolution. But that advantage starts to disappear pretty quickly as you move away from the center of the frame. And at the borders, the f1.4 provides better resolution, while the 1.2 looks a little smeary. When both lenses are shot at f1.4, not a whole lot changes. The 1.2 is still much sharper in the center, but down in the bottom corner, the f1.4 resolves more detail, and the same is true in the upper corner, of course. Stop down to f2, the difference starts to fade in the center of the image, but the L lens still has a distinct advantage. But it holds a little bit better away from the center of the frame. But towards the edges of the frame, the cheaper lens still gives us much better performance. By f2.8, the difference in the center of the frame is pretty negligible. The 1.2 might have slightly higher resolution, but it's really close. However, towards the edge of the frame, the 1.4 is still quite a bit better. And if we stop down to f4, I don't see any significant difference in the center, but the 1.2 is still a mess at the edge. And even if we stop down to f8, the 1.2 is only just starting to catch up with the 1.4. As a side note, really just a preview of the next comparison, take a look at how the Sigma 50mm f1.4 art series lens compares to the Canon 1.2L at f1.4. In the center, the Sigma starts off at least as sharp as the Canon, and it's also much better at the edge of the frame. The Sigma does have a couple of drawbacks though, so subscribe below if you want to be notified when that video is published next week. Back to the two Canon lenses though. Let's take a look at a scene where there isn't so much contrast. Here at f1.4, the difference in resolution still exists, but because of the low contrast, the f1.2 doesn't look so much sharper in the center. What difference there is, is especially visible in these tree branches and other fine details. 
Further away from the center, looking at the details on top of these towers, the f1.2 is still a bit sharper, but they're remarkably close. At the edge of the frame, they remain pretty similar, but on the f1.2 side, some of the details look kind of smudgy, especially down here. At f2, not much changes. There's still not a lot of difference in the center. And on tops of these towers, the f1.2 side gets noticeably sharper. And at the edge, the difference is pretty minimal, but maybe a bit sharper on the f1.4 side. At f4, I don't really see any difference in the center. And away from the center, they're both wonderfully sharp. Again, I don't see any significant difference. The 1.4 still looks just a touch sharper at the edge here, but I doubt that it's a difference that you'd see in a print. And even down in the corner, where the difference should be the greatest, the f1.4 is only a little bit sharper. In fact, I'm just cutting off this comparison here. If you want to see more resolution examples, you can take a look at the full review on my website. In summary, I think I can say this. From wide open until about f4, the L lens is visibly sharper in the center of the frame. From f4 and beyond, they're very similar. In the corners of the image, the f1.4 lens provides better resolution from wide open until about f8, and after that, there isn't much difference. The difference is most apparent in high contrast areas though. Where there's less contrast, there's less difference in sharpness. But most people don't buy these lenses for landscape work. So edge to edge resolution probably isn't that important. So let's move on to some other aspects of image quality, like bokeh. If you're not familiar, the term bokeh refers to the aesthetic quality of the out of focus portion of an image. Looking at some daytime examples with both lenses wide open, we'd all expect a smoother blur from the larger 1.2 aperture, and that's exactly what we see. It's especially apparent in areas like this with bright highlights, but even down here, the f1.4 looks pretty busy, where the 1.2 is nice and smooth. If we zoom in on some of those highlights, you can see the ones on the left have a strong green halo, while the ones on the right have a much smoother edge. But even when both lenses are set to the same aperture, the 1.2 remains much smoother. The 1.4 picks up a lot of ghosting that the 1.2 just doesn't. If we stop down to f2.8, the same thing is true overall, and if we look closely at the highlights, they take on a much more hexagonal shape on the 1.4 side, but remain relatively round on the 1.2. Here's another example with strong highlights in the background, with both lenses shot at f1.4. You can see that the highlights on the 1.4 side are much more contrasty with oblong shapes, while the 1.2 is smoother and rounder. Which is better is a matter of taste, but there's a very clear difference. However, if there aren't bright highlights in the background, they're much harder to tell apart. This is an evil cat called Boris. Which of these do you think was shot with the 1.2? That's right, it was the first one. By the time I changed lenses, I couldn't keep his attention anymore. It's a better picture, but there's not a huge difference in image quality. Now let's take a look at some examples shot at night. At f1.4, the 1.4 lens produces rounder highlight circles, which is to be expected since its aperture blades are not affecting the image. But it also displays the stronger color fringing around the borders again. Even if we open up the 1.2 all the way though, it doesn't get perfectly round. The tops of the circles are chopped off. At 100% magnification, we can see that on the 1.2 side, there are plainly visible concentric circles in these highlights. These are sometimes called onion rings. This is caused by the aspheric glass elements in the lens, which are not present in the 1.4. Looking at another example, we see the same thing harsh, contrasty edges on the 1.4 side, onion rings on the 1.2 side. And when I open up to 1.2, the top of the highlight circles get cut off again. So for the bokeh enthusiast, neither one is perfect, but the 1.2 is certainly smoother. 
Now, a few words about these lenses' autofocus performance. First of all, focusing with all large aperture prime lenses is tricky. It takes practice and sometimes a bit of luck, since the depth of field is so shallow. And it's especially hard at f1.2. At that aperture, if you focus on someone's nose, their eyes will be too blurry for the image to be usable, usually. That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the lenses, it's just the nature of shooting with such a shallow depth of field. Even taking that into account, though, I find that the focusing on the f1.2L to be pretty finicky. It's very important to set the focus micro adjustment in your camera, and I usually had to pick a single autofocus point or a small group and stick with it to get decent results. I frequently had problems with back focusing even then. For events and street shooting, I prefer to work with the 1.4, since it's more compact and lightweight. But also because for this kind of work, the extra third of a stop of light just isn't a big enough difference to make up for the difficulty in focusing. On the f1.4 lens, the autofocus motor is moderately fast, and it's quieter than the 1.8. It's good enough. I just want to mention the lenses vignetting very quickly, because they're both pretty bad and they're both also almost identical. They both lose almost three stops of light in the corners when shot wide open, but it's mostly evened out by around f2.8. The only real difference between the two is that they're offset by a third of a stop. The L at f1.4 is the same as the other lens at 1.6. So let's sum up. When it comes to focusing noise, the f1.2 is significantly quieter, and its center resolution is better, and it's much more contrasty there. In the corners, though, the 1.4 performs better. Looking at the bokeh, there's some personal preference involved, but the f1.2 is smoother, though it does give you onion rings and clipped highlight circles. The f1.4 focuses more reliably for me, and even though it's nearly a tie for vignetting, the 1.2 has the advantage because it starts at a larger aperture. And of course, when it comes to price, that $1,200 difference is hard to ignore. In the end, which lens will be better for you will really depend on what you want to do with it. In the studio, or for portraits, or still life work, the flaws of the f1.2 won't matter much. For day-to-day -day shooting, where the center resolution isn't as critical, the f1.4 will probably be just fine. Now at this point, some of you might be saying, but I want great optics and I don't want to pay $1,500. Isn't there some middle ground? Then again, I suggest that you subscribe and watch next week's video featuring the Sigma f1.4 art series lens. As long as I've still got you here. I love making these lens comparison videos, but there's not much money in it. If you'd like to help support more videos like this and you have an extra dollar or two, I hope you'll think about clicking on my support link here. It'll help me make more and better videos. Of course, if you're a starving artist or just can't afford it, then don't worry about it. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week with a new video.